It was July 20th, 1969, when Neil Armstrong and his team took off for the moon in the famous Apollo 11 rocket. In total, they had to travel a mind-boggling 240,000 miles. It took them three days, three hours, and 49 minutes to reach the surface of our natural satellite. They landed in an area called the Sea of Tranquility. This place was decided on after years of research because it had good visibility, was relatively smooth, and was easily reachable with as little propellant as possible. The astronauts didn't spend more than 21 hours, 36 minutes on the moon, but they were quite productive, spending most of their time setting up various devices. One of them was supposed to precisely measure the exact distance from there to Earth by timing how long it took a laser beam to travel from Earth to the lunar surface and back. Another device was set up to measure moonquakes and potential meteor impacts. We know today that the most powerful moonquakes are much weaker than earthquakes, even though they can last for up to an hour, way longer than that of Earth. Years later, Armstrong said that NASA had limited their time on the moon because they hadn't known how the spacesuits would handle the moon's extreme temperatures. They can be as high as 260 degrees Fahrenheit during the day and as low as 280 degrees Fahrenheit below zero at night. The last person to have stepped on the surface of the moon was Gene Cernan. It happened in December 1972. This was part of a mission called Apollo 17. You probably can't help but wonder how come no one has reached the surface of the moon in the next 50 years. Turns out, it's because sending people to the moon is very expensive. Regardless, we've made a lot of progress on Earth and are ready to send astronauts to our satellite pretty soon. Here's where the Artemis project comes in. In Greek folklore, she was Apollo's sister and the Greek spirit of the moon. This program, overseen by NASA, aims to not only send astronauts to the lunar surface in the future, but also build some sort of a base where the moon can be studied in safe conditions. To make sure this project is successful, this year, NASA launched Orion, a spacecraft with no crew on board to orbit the moon and return to Earth. Think of it as an automated test drive. Before we actually send people out there again, we need to make sure all the devices work properly. One day, Orion will be the vehicle that will take astronauts to the moon again. It features a launch abort system to keep astronauts safe in case something bad happens during the launch. It also has a service module, which is the powerhouse that fuels and propels Orion and keeps astronauts alive with water, oxygen, power, and temperature control. Overall, Artemis aims to build a long-term human outpost on our satellite by 2030. But searching for a cozy place on the moon has turned out to be a bit more challenging than initially believed. Don't worry though, NASA specialists have recently come up with a pretty cool idea. It has to do with lava tubes found on the surface of the moon. Turns out that the interior parts of these lunar pits and caves have pretty steady temperatures. Since the main challenge of the first moon landing back in 1969 was the extreme temperature variations, this discovery might actually solve this problem. Sure, there's still a lack of air that scientists will need to tackle, but that's what oxygen tanks are for, right? Recent research shows that these underground lava tubes have constant temperatures that are around 63 degrees Fahrenheit. These lunar pits were discovered back in 2009 by the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. They are these large holes in the surface of the moon, but the interesting part is that some feature underground tunnels too. Not only is the temperature nice and cozy in there, but they could also help shield us from cosmic rays, solar radiation, and meteorites whenever we're ready to set up camp on the moon. We have similar structures here on Earth, which could help us better study those on the moon remotely. They form once the top part of a stream of lava solidifies and the molten rock inside drains away, creating this rock tube. All these missions will get humanity back to the moon pretty soon and this time sustainably. But they will also prepare us for our next big space project, the exploration of Mars. We've sent more spacecraft to study the environment on Mars than to any other planet. But regardless of how well we train to survive here on Earth or even on the moon, the conditions on Mars are currently inhospitable. Mostly because it's really cold there. 
On average, the temperature is about negative 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Even during the summer, it's never hotter than 86 degrees Fahrenheit. And to top it all off, the planet's atmosphere is made of 95.3% carbon dioxide. So there's literally no way we could breathe there without special devices. As opposed to our planet, Mars doesn't have a magnetic field on its surface, so it's attacked by the sun's radiation. Since temperatures can vary so much, Mars often experiences powerful dust storms, which can cover the entire planet. These storms can't physically harm people, but the dust might clog electronics and render solar-powered instruments unstable. A lot of people in the scientific community do see Mars as a better place for long-term settlement, even though our moon is closer. It might even end up costing us less to settle there. Firstly, because it's believed that there is indeed water on Mars. It's just stuck in underground frozen lakes. The soil also appears to be rich in nutrients, although it may also have chemicals that might be harmful. On the red planet, the gravitational pull is only 38% of Earth's, so it would be easier to carry heavy objects here than in most other places in the solar system. We do have a rough idea of NASA's latest plans for its first crewed mission to Mars. For now, it's planned for the late 2030s or early 2040s, and it's going to be a 30-day-long two-person mission to the red planet. Sure, that's decades away, but it still might be really challenging. Even if NASA manages to get the funding and the technology, a round trip there will take about 500 days. Remember how I mentioned gravity might be a problem on Mars? Well, the lack of it means that those two astronauts would arrive at Mars after months of living in microgravity conditions. And it would take them a lot of time to physically recover before they could start exploring the red planet. After years of research, NASA figured out that living in microgravity conditions heavily affects the human body. It means a loss of bone and muscle mass, as well as a shift in the normal movement of body fluids, which tend to go upward. This can lead to more pressure on the eyes and even vision problems. For this particular reason, people already living on the International Space Station use a cool thing called the Advanced Resistive Exercise Device, or ARED. The conditions on the International Space Station affect not only the bones of personnel aboard, but their muscle mass too. And some of the changes that happen to their bodies might be permanent if they're not careful. So NASA needs to keep its astronauts on a strict exercise program. Because you can't work out normally in microgravity, the ARED is used to fix this. It's pretty much a resistance machine that helps astronauts to lift weights in a zero-gravity environment. It also features a treadmill with a twist. It straps astronauts in for running. Another solution for exploring Mars might be having those two astronauts permanently stay in a pressurized rover during their mission. But that also means that their exploration capacity would be limited. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.